Let's learn how to read and write images, display images, and obtain the pixel information for processing. I'm going to begin with an empty VI. And to start, I will place a file path control. This is where you type in the name of the, Im of the image that you'd like to uh, open up. I happen to have a little collection of images here, so let's try the cameraman image first. I'm specifically working with the PNG image format. Under graphics and sound, I can find this sub VI called read PNG image file. Now actually the file has been read, but we just don't see anything yet. Let's look at what happens on the output side. I'm creating a default indicator and when I run it, I see some information about the image. I see that it's a 8 bits per pixel, and I also see that it's 256 by 256 resolution. Let's look under picture functions, and this one called Draw Flattened Pix Map. And this looks at the image cluster and then creates the appropriate information for a picture indicator. And the picture indicator does not automatically size itself. I need to expand its size a bit. Now, because I know that this particular image is 256 by 256, I can select it and then resize the picture indicator to match the size of the image. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's do some processing on this image. I'm going to use the unbundle by name uh, node here, and I will connect my original image structure, or cluster, rather. I'm going to select the image data. And let me begin by creating a default indicator, just pointing out that this is creating an array for us. Now, the numerical information is not going to be very helpful, but i just pointing out here that what we get is a 1D array, and it's specifically of unsigned 8-bit integers, also known as the U8 data type. I'll delete that one. And for some simple processing, I'm going to use the reverse 1D array That will be my basic processing. Now I need to essentially do the reverse process. So I'll use bundle by name. And then I need to pick up the cluster from my original image that gets most of the information that we need. And then when I select image and wire it to the output of my processing, that replaces that cluster with the processed image array. I'll do a control drag over here to do a copy on that one. Just a quick way of getting a second indicator that's the right size. And the processing, sure enough, shows that the array has been reversed. Now to complete the process, to save this processed image to a file, create a second file path control and then change this one to output. And in similar place where we've already been, we have a write PNG file. And we'll feed that with the image cluster resulting from the processed version of the image. Let's check to see what happened. Before I run, I see just my original image and no processed image. Now after I run, if you look carefully, you can see the processed image file showing up right there. All right, that pretty much takes care of what's necessary for doing 1D processing of the images. 
It's also possible to treat the image as a two-dimensional array. Now I'll start with this sub-VI called unflattened PixMap. So this pink cluster wire that we've been looking at technically would be referred to as a PixMap. We see a number of outputs, mask, colors, Pix maps of various bit dimensions, ranging all the way up to 24 bits. And on top, we have one more input called top left. You can refer to the help to get more details on all of those controls or all of those inputs and outputs. But in the meantime, let me just try creating an indicator right here. Again, just to emphasize that we now are obtaining our image as a two-dimensional array. As a quick demonstration of 2D image processing, let me use the convolution block available in, under signal operations. Convolution can work with two-dimensional arrays just as easily as one-dimensional arrays. What I'll do though is change the data type to double. And then I'm going to create a constant to be convolved with the image. Now in the context of image processing, convolution with this little 2D array is, uh, or the 2D array would be referred to as a convolution mask. And the values that I'm typing in right now are a particular type of convolution, or is a particular type of convolution mask that is good for edge detection. I know before I attempt to display the convolved image, I will need to add a constant offset of what amounts to the midpoint value between 0 and 255. Because at the moment, the results of convolution are centered about 0. I'll change the data type eventually back to U8. But before I do that, let me create first my constant 128 and then add that to the 2D array. Change the data type back to U8 and then it's getting close enough that we can go ahead and display that result. Under picture functions, we can draw an, an unflattened image. That's what we'll use in this case. We can just wire in the image array directly. Need to create another picture indicator. Let me see that right here. Actually, to borrow the same size of the existing picture indicator, let me do it this way. All right, let's see how we're doing. Go ahead and run this. Well, it's pretty interesting looking, kind of unexpected. It looks like just a bunch of colored noise. What we actually need is one extra array from here called the color table. And I'm gonna essentially just borrow that from the original source image. Now that we have the appropriate color table, should be seeing something. There's one last step we need to do. This is called a polymorphic sub-VI, so you need to make sure that you pick the right type. I'm trying to display an 8-bit image. Well, it looks pretty good. This is the edge-detected version of the original. You can see how the back of the coat is now highlighted in white. All right, that's a basic overview of image handling techniques in LabVIEW.